All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be building upon the last video uh, that we did on Towery, where we, where we looked at invoking Rust functions from our client-side JavaScript application. Um, today, we're going to be taking that knowledge and applying it so that we can actually take contents from a from a text area that we have here on here in our web view and saving that to our local file system. If you haven't watched the previous video, I will leave a card uh, above so that you can go ahead and check that out because there's going to be concepts there that you're going to want to uh, to transition into uh, today's video. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into things. Um, I have a basic form here. Um, it looks very similar probably to the one from the previous video, just in this case, we're using a text area as well, uh, a text area instead of a numbers input. Um, with that said, what we're going to want to do is, to get started is we are going to want to go ahead and create a const, we'll say message equals ref. We'll want to import that from view. And then we'll want to go ahead and you go ahead and bind that to a text area. Obviously this is view. Um, you may do this a little different in another, uh, in another framework, but uh, that, that'll be knowledge that you'll want to already have um, as this isn't really focused on, uh, on client side JavaScript frameworks. Um, with that said, let's go ahead now and we want to go ahead and create a function. So I'm going to call this save file, uh, save, save file contents equals, uh, I'm going to make this, go ahead and make this async because we'll need that in a little bit. And for now, I'm just going to console log our message dot value. So now if I say hello world and click save file, it doesn't do anything because I need to actually bind that to the click event so that whenever we click this button, it will call that function. Uh, so I click save and it prints out hello world. So now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and we need to do make some preparations. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is jump over to our main RS. So you'll notice that we still have our, here in our main RS file, we have, we still have the double function that we wrote in the previous video. Um, we're just going to be changing this up a little bit to accommodate our needs. So we're not going to be returning anything. So we can go ahead and remove that. Uh, and then we can, we're going to just say save file here and save file is going to take a path, which is going to be a string, and contents, which is also going to be a string. And of course, we'll have to pass that to our generate handler. So now, uh, save file isn't doing anything for the, for the time being. Um, what we will do is we're going to, for, the for now, let's just go ahead and print Uh, and we're going to say path and contents. So for now, we're just going to output, uh, we're just gonna output the path and contents that we receive from our application. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and we need to, in our, now that we've done that, we now have a, uh, we now have a Rust function that we can invoke, right? So we want to go ahead and import invoke like we did before from at towery app slash api slash towery and then i'm going to put this in a try catch just because uh invoke will will be awaited it is prom it is a promise um and then we are going and then there's going to be one other thing that we'll uh, we'll want to do here in just a minute but let's go ahead and console this out that way just in case we have an error uh, so we'll want to await invoke 
Uh, we don't have anything that we want to uh, to return here, so it's fine to just do it this way. Uh, obviously, we know that the function that we want to invoke is save file, so we'll want to say invoke same save file, and then there will be some arguments that we'll want to pass. So we know that contents, um, we know that the arguments are path and contents. And we have contents already, right? We can just pass the message dot value. But where does this path come from? Well, in order to do that, this is where this is kind of the cool part. In uh, in order to do that, we actually need to invoke the save dialog. Um, so we've looked in previous videos. Uh, if you haven't seen that, seen the uh, the open dialog, the open dialog. Uh, video that I did when we, whenever we were reading co uh, file contents, I'll uh, I'll put another card here. Um, but there's also a save uh, there's also a save dialog that we will you we will take advantage of here. So what we we'll want to do here is we'll want to say save import save from at Towery apps API dialog. And what's going to happen here is we're going to call this save this save uh, this save function from the dialog the dialog submodule. And what that will do is, is it will prompt us to find a directory that we want to uh, that we want to save this file to. And uh, towards the end of this video, we'll look at an alternative approach to this, but for the time being, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say const save path equals await save. And then um, if you haven't watched, again, if you haven't watched that video, uh, definitely go and check it out. But we these dialogues have the possibility of returning null in the instance that we hit cancel in the dialogue or in the instance that we hit, uh, or, it, or you know, if we close the dialog or whatever, uh, there's a chance that this could be null. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, say save path, if not save path, then return. All right, so now, now that we've done that, we now have our path. So we can say save path. So now we have both of our variables to send. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's say, hello world, and then click save. It's going to prompt us with our dialog. I'm just gonna save it here to my desktop and say test hello world.txt and click save. And if we go to our terminal now, you'll see here, we have output our we have output our path as well as the contents of that file. Now this is obviously very basic. There may be some edge cases that we want to account for in a real world scenario, but just kind of the basic concept of sending this over is uh, is there, right? Um, so the next thing that we'll want to do now that we we see that that data is being passed to our uh, to our to our REST function is we want to go ahead and write that to the file system. So let's go ahead and jump over to our main RS file instead of and instead of printing that out, let's go ahead and say fs. Uh, we'll, we'll take advantage of that, and we're going to use write, and write is going to take a path as well as contents. And then of course we'll want to unwrap that uh, just so that it blows up at us if it uh, just in, just so that it'll it will blow up at us if there is an error. So now that we've saved you'll see that the application has come up successfully and if Rust blows up this won't happen. Uh, you'll get errors in the console. Um, you'll get errors here and then you'll uh, You'll get here, and then the uh, the Towery application will not come up. So, with that said, let's go ahead and type in this is a test. 
I want to save here on my desktop. I'm going to say this is a test txt. Save. And now, as you can see here on my desktop, I have this txt file. I am going to open with Visual Studio Code, open. And you can see that we have this is a test. Now, something that I want to mention is you will likely need to, I'm going to come to our calorieconf.json. Uh, as of right now, I, ha I have everything allowed. Um, I will say that I have run into a small bug, at least on the version of Towery that I'm on currently. I have not updated since the first video that I've made on Towery, um, but I have run into issues where it's kind of flaky, where sometimes I will need to specify a scope for uh, what, what directories Towery is allowed to work with. Um, so just to show you what that looks like, um, you would here say fs. Uh, so you would specify in, you, in the allow list, you would specify even with all, uh, you would specify fs. And then here you would say, you would still say all because, uh, I mean, you, you could specify this to write and say true. Um, for the sake of the video, we're just gonna say all uh, is true. And then you would specify a scope. And here I will link in the description below uh, what you would include in scope. But for the sake of this video, just know that, that I'm doing this, this here to say I want basic, just let the application do whatever whatever it wants. It can interact with any anything. Um, I will say that it working just now was a fluke and I have had flukes happen in the past where, um, where it wrote to a directory and then like instances after that, it wouldn't let me. So uh, I don't know if that's a bug or if uh, I'm doing something wrong, but that being said, uh, just know if that happens to you, this, uh, this scope option is likely what you're going to need. Okay, so now that we've talked about that a little bit, and, and let me preface, uh, using all is not secure. We'll go over security in another video, um, where, and we'll talk about actually scoping your application to its needs. Um, but this is all for the sake of these tutorial videos. Um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead. I want to come back to, you've seen that the application will write to a directory. Um, something that I want to, something that I want to bring up though, is you have another option for saving file contents, um, that does not involve, uh, writing any Rust code. Um, it, you're just limited a little bit more. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove all of this. And we are going to say import write file from at Towery apps slash API slash FS. And I actually think the one that I want is write text file. Um, so all of this is pretty moot. Uh, we don't need any of that. What we, what we will do is we will say await write text file. And here we will have to give it a path. Um, so this would, be the this would be the name of your file, right? So we're not specifying anything. This would be specifically if you had some sort of configuration file where you didn't really care. Um, you didn't really care if it was... Uh, like it wouldn't be something where the user of your application would uh, would care about this. This might be for a configuration file or something. Um, but that being, and it just makes it easier so that you don't have to have a whole bunch of Rust code that deals with this. Um, because obviously there's, uh, obviously there's not uh, a need, right? There's not a need to uh, have them select that directory. Um, so that being said, here I'm just going to say test.txt 
and this is go going to then take my message.value for contents, and there are some options here. Um, this has a default directory. I don't remember what the, uh, what, I don't remember what this dir, what, like where, where this actually will output to, but it gives you the option to pass a directory, which would be the, uh, the base directory that, uh, this would basically write to. And in our case, we would say base directory dot, and we will want to import this. So you'll notice it got added to our Towery apps FS submodule import dot, and I have all of these options where I'm telling Towery, hey, you already know about these directories, use it as the directory that we are going to write to. So I'm just gonna say desktop and when using this method, it has to be in this way. Uh, you have to use, if you're going to specify a directory, it has to be here, right? You, you, are, you can't just pass a, uh, you can't pass a directory that, uh, that you've pulled from the save dialog submodule. Um, it has to be one that they have already predefined. If you want to allow the user to sa uh, save to a specific directory or save to a, a directory that they choose, you will have to write the code to, uh, you will have to write the Rust code that will output that file. It's not something that's provided by this package. So now, just to kind of show you, um, I'm gonna say, hello world, this is a test and click save. I'm going to open up here, no errors. So we know that it should have written. Uh, so we'll go to back to here and you'll see I do have that test.txt and there it is. So we did in fact write that file. And I could do that for any of those other base directories. But that is going to conclude today's video. Um, I hope that this covers a bunch of bases when it comes to interacting with the file system, allowing, uh, allowing users to save con contents to the file system. Um, if there's anything that you can think of that I missed, or if there's any, any questions that you have, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Leave feedback. Uh, don't forget to like the video if, uh, if you enjoyed, if this, uh, if this all made sense. Um, if you need to hit the dislike, uh, please leave comments down below letting me know how I can improve and I will try to incorporate that as best I can. But I appreciate everyone watching. You have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.